Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. We're doing AKS 10C in your portfolio. It says I can plan and carry out investigations using motors, generators, and electromagnets to determine the relationship between magnetism and the movement of electrical charge. So the first thing on your sheet is going to be all about electromagnets. It says design an experiment to create the magnetism of the electromagnet. Um, first, you have to understand what an electromagnet is, okay? An electromagnet, you can see the picture here. This is as simple as it gets. We have a battery. The battery is hooked up to a wire, and the wire is coiled around an iron core. In this case, it's a nail being an iron core, you guys, because that is the easiest way to do this, okay? The other side of the wire is then hooked up to the other side of the battery, one for negative and one for positive, completing our circuit. What this does is it allows our electrons to flow negative all the way through to positive. And when we have a coil of wire with electrons running through it around an iron core like this, we're going to have a magnetic field. Okay, so what this does is it creates a magnetic field. So it becomes what we call an electromagnet. In other words, it's like a temporary magnet um, because I can take this apart. I can unhook this wire. And all of a sudden, my magnetic field will disappear because I no longer have a closed circuit with electricity running through it. So if I go ahead and I hook it back up um, where I have a closed circuit, electricity will run through it again. And then my magnetic field will then again be there. So I can easily control this to be magnetic or non-magnetic. Okay. So this works in lots of different applications. Um, a really good example would be the doors at the school, when we have the fire drill, they shut, right? And then you always have to reopen afterwards. That's because they work on an electromagnet. And we can turn that magnet that holds the door shut, or that holds the door open, excuse me. We can turn it on and off as we want to for our safety, right? For the fire alarm. Now, um, this is showing it pick up paper clips to show you that, yes, it is truly magnetic in this point. Um, I do want to show you a simulation really quick. Okay, so this is just a quick electromagnet simulation. Notice we have our battery. It's hooked to wires, and we have a coil going on. Um, and this is an electromagnet. It doesn't have an iron core. The iron core just makes it stronger, okay? So it's not necessary because I do have a coil of wire, but if you're wanting to make one at home, I suggest you put an iron core in the middle. Um, we are going to, I'm going to turn up my voltage because see right now it's at zero. So I'm going to turn up my voltage and um, what I want you to see, I'm going to turn it up all the way to 10 volts. You can see that these are representing a compass, okay? Um, notice that it is creating a magnetic field. So as um, my current is flowing through this wire around this coil, we are creating a magnetic field, all right? If I reduce the voltage, one, my current's going to get slower, right? We already know that. But two, notice how dim my magnetic field is getting. The lower and lower I put my voltage, the less of a magnetic field I'm making. It's just not as strong, okay? So this is not going to be able to pick up that many paper clips, while the one that's 10 volts is going to be able to pick up a whole lot of paper clips, if that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss our answers here. Um, it's Number one says, what are the components you would change? Um, and the whole point is to design an experiment to increase the magnetism of the electromagnet. So we're just trying to make it a stronger magnet. Um, what you could do is you can increase the number of coils around your iron core. The number of coils increase will always give you a stronger um, magnet in the end. Um, or you can just get a higher voltage. So change out this battery with a battery that has higher voltage or get multiple batteries, right? Either one would work. How would you know if your experiment was successful? You would have to perform the experiment again. You would have to try it. Does it pick up the same number of paper clips? If it picks up more, you've succeeded, right? Um, and then after watching that simulation that I just did, uh, what did you have to do to alter, um, to increase your magnetism? We had to make our voltage bigger because in the simulation, we couldn't change our number of coils, right? Although in real life, we could also do that. So let's move on 
And the next one we're looking at um, are these questions, and they're all about electric motors, okay? So it says um, lots of questions about it, and then we have some pictures, and we're like, ah, what's a motor? So let's go um, and look first about what exactly is an electric motor. So here's some pictures of what one looks like. You guys remember there's a lot of different motors out there, but they all pretty much have the same principle of how they work. So um, if you look at this, it says a battery causes an electric current to flow through the coil of an electromagnet. So essentially, the first step is make an electromagnet, right? And then we're going to put it around. So here's our, electric mag our electromagnet right here is our coil of wire. Here's our battery. And we're going to put it around a permanent magnet, okay? So it says unlike poles of the two magnets attract each other and the like poles repel. Okay, because we know like repel, we know opposites attract, right? North and south. So this causes the coil to rotate until the opposite poles are next to each other. So really what is going to happen, you guys, is this is going to spin in a circle around here, okay? And it's just going to, every time like south meets south, it's going to repel and it's going to spin, right? And then north meets north, and it's going to spin. And it's just going to continue that motion. Um, so let's go to our questions. And it says, what energy transformation takes place in a motor? Well, it's electrical energy changing into mechanical energy, right? We're taking the electrical energy from our electromagnet, and we're converting that into motion, right? Kinetic energy, or in this case, we're saying mechanical energy. That's absolutely correct. Um, we can use motors you guys i mean you know what a motor is it's in like um a motor boat like right the motor on the boat it spins a propeller around you know, we have motors and like blenders and all kinds of stuff around our house um, we use motors a lot fans they spin blades with a tiny tiny motor in there right um so all different applications where we just need things to have mechanical energy we start with a motor um, briefly explain how it works i just did um, design an experiment to determine how the motor speed would increase. You could design um, a lot of different experiments with this, right? But one you could do is you could try to change the size of the battery. You could try to change the strength of your permanent magnet. You could try to increase the coil if you have coils. Um, like this little simple motor here has coils. You can try to increase or decrease the coils. So you could try a lot of different experiments with this to, to determine that. So what components do you need to alter to increase the speed of the motor? Well, um, pretty much the things that I said already. You could increase the voltage. You could increase the strength of your permanent magnet, right? Um, you could up the coils if you have coils, um, like this one, for instance. You can up those coils and um, just make your electromagnet stronger, which makes your whole motor stronger um, in, in, in turn, right? Now we're going to talk about a generator. So um, again, it's like, what in the world is a generator? Let's talk about that first before we go and answer these questions. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at this. It says, as a crank is turned, the rotating coil crosses the magnetic field lines of the magnet and an electric current is induced in the wire. Okay, so it just means it starts, like the electric current is just starting, you guys, in the wire, okay? Uh, when the coil is not crossing the magnetic field lines, no electric current is induced. Um, see, the light bulb is not lighting up that time, okay? And then if we go to the last one, it says, as the coil continues to rotate, the magnetic field lines are crossed in a different direction, and electric current is induced in the opposite direction. So um, notice our arrows. The first time they're going down and around, now they're going down and around the opposite way, okay? Um, so whenever it's kind of flat, we're producing electricity, um, but when it's up and down, it is not. See, the light bulb is not on. Um, so I wanna show you a simulation that you could probably understand this a little bit better. Okay, so here is um, a way different generator from what you saw in the picture, but it is a generator no less. So what we have here is a bar magnet. So we have our north and our south, and it's on a spindle, right? We also have a coil of wire hooked up to a light bulb. There's no power source here. 
So there's no battery happening. Notice our current is not flowing, okay? But you can see the magnetic field coming off of this magnet right here. And we can see our field lines, our magnetic field lines. And notice it's all still, it's motionless at, at this time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water. And the flowing water is gonna spin our spindle around, changing our magnetic field. So this magnet is changing the field. You guys see all of these little diamonds here? Um, because the magnet's moving, our magnetic field is moving. It's close enough to our coil of wire to have a changing magnetic field inside that coil. Whenever we have a changing magnetic field inside a coil, it will produce an electric current, okay? So you notice the flow um, happening inside our wire which is providing enough electricity to light up our light bulb. Now, if I were to increase that flow of water and we have more mechanical energy happening over here, we have more um, changing magnetic fields, right? It's significantly increased. Um, then what we're gonna have is an induced current where you can see our light bulb is dramatically lighting up, all right? So that is essentially a generator. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer our questions about a generator. What energy transformation takes place in a generator? Well, it's mechanical energy going to electrical energy, right? So we have that motion and it's turning it into electricity. It's the whole point of a generator is to generate electricity. Um, briefly explain how it works, I just did. Um, design an experiment to determine how to produce more electricity from this generator. Um, and this is something that's really important, right? Because we have power plants that do this all the time and we're constantly trying to improve them, make them better or whatever. So this is something that um, you could try to do at home um, in a much smaller scale. So you could try to do something like change out the magnets, right? You could try to um, get uh, whatever you have to spin faster, right? So if you're using like the coil or whatever, just try to make it spin really, really fast or try to make it spin slower. See the difference, see what's working, what's not working. That's all um, an experiment is, is just seeing what happens when you change up one component, right? So four, what components do you need to alter to increase the production of electricity? Easiest way to do it, get a stronger magnet, right? So if you increase that magnet strength, you're already gonna improve your electricity outtake. Um, and then you can increase that mechanical energy. So if you can get it to spin faster, then you will create um, a heavier uh, uh, magnetic, um, magnetic field, which will create more electricity um, by induction, okay? So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know.